captain has turned on the seatbelt light. Please take your seat and fasten your seatbelts. Thank you. Meet Domingo Fontana. Domingo is a translator. He translates documents from English to Spanish and Arabic. Meet Simon, one of Domingo's clients. Simon recently purchased Madcap Lingo, which is Madcap's translation tool. One day, Simon needed some old Word documents translated into Spanish. He told Domingo about Madcap Lingo, but Domingo said, "I have another translation tool. It has been in my family for generations, way back to the early 1990s. I can't stand the tool, but that's what I will use." So Simon said, "Fine." That's because Simon knew that Lingo is for more than just translating files. He knew that he could also use it for managing the translation workflow. So instead of sending the Word documents directly to Domingo, he first imported them into Lingo. Simon then zipped everything into a project bundle like this. He selected the Xlib files bundle option since Domingo planned to use a third-party translation tool instead of Lingo. Simon then sent this bundle file to Domingo. Because the zipped bundle files were in an XLF file format, a standard translation file format, Domingo's other tool had no problem opening them for translation. When Domingo finished his work, he zipped the files and sent them back to Simon, and he said, "Hello, my name is Domingo Fontana. I translated your files. Prepare to unpackage them in Lingo at a place and time of your convenience." And that's what Simon did, and it looked like this in Lingo. Andy ran a statistics report on the files to make sure Domingo had translated them all completely, which he did. Then Simon used Lingo to export the files back out to Word. It was super duper easy. A few months later, Simon's company hired Domingo as a translator. One day, Simon created a big Madcap Flare project. Flare is Madcap Software's authoring tool, and he placed the Flare project in a shared directory where other people in the company could access it. Simon needed to have the files translated from English to Arabic. Domingo now worked in the cubicle next to Simon, and he now had Lingo, which can also be used as a regular CAT tool. By CAT tool, we mean computer-assisted translation. We're not talking about a room full of cats that can translate files from English to Arabic. That would be kind of weird. As a CAT tool, Lingo lets you translate Word, Flare, and many other types of files from one language to another. So Domingo began to import Simon's Flare project into Lingo. Domingo also realized that Lingo would let him create a translation memory database. In fact, he could use many translation memory databases for a single Lingo project if he really wanted to. A translation memory database allows people like Domingo to reuse previous translations. It is way cool, like a unicorn riding on top of a shark. It is that cool. So Domingo created a new translation memory database. Once he was finished importing the Flare files into the new Lingo project, he opened his new translation memory database to look at it. It was empty because no translations had been added to it yet. But because Domingo's family had been using translation memory for generations, they'd built up a very large database of their own, and it was all contained in a thing called a TMX file. So Domingo imported that TMX file into his new database, and it looked like this in Lingo. From the left side of the Lingo workspace, Domingo saw all of the files he needed to translate. There were all kinds of files. He had no idea what these files were, but it didn't matter because all he needed to worry about was the simple text segments in each one. He even saw files holding text for image callouts. No kidding, you can translate image callouts in Lingo. Once again, as cool as unicorns riding sharks. So Domingo opened each file one at a time and translated the segments in the translation editor from English to Arabic, and it looked like this in Lingo. Whenever he finished translating a segment, he pressed Enter or clicked this button, which accepted the translation and uploaded his work to translation memory, so that he wouldn't have to do it again in the future. How did Domingo know for sure that a segment was finished and uploaded to translation memory? Because the status color changed to gray, and a little green check mark showed up. And whenever there was a segment of text that his ancestors had already translated, it showed up as a match in the translation memory. Some of the matches were partial, like this one. And to use the partial match, Domingo double-clicked it to add it to the row. Then he adjusted the text and accepted it. Other segments were exact 100% matches, and they showed up in the row automatically. All Domingo had to do was confirm those segments. And then there were other segments that were 101% matches. Domingo's friend Nigel, who's a lingo expert, explained it to him. Nigel said that sometimes an exact match is found not only for the current segment, 
but also for the segment that comes before or after it. That's why those are also called context matches, because they not only take into account the segment text, but the context as well. Nigel said to Domingo, Look, write down the file. 101, 101, 101. Oh, I see. Most matches only go up to 100. Exactly. Does that mean it's a closer match? Well, it's one closer, isn't it? You see, most blokes are translating at 100. Where can you go from there? Where? I don't know. Exactly. So what Lingo does, if there's a context match and we need that extra push over the cliff, you know what Lingo does? Put it up to 101? 101, exactly. One closer. Why don't you just make 100 closer and make 100 be the top number and make that a little closer of a match? These go to 101. Domingo gave Nigel a fist bump and went back to his project. Now, what about those segments that had inline formatting? You know, an author highlights text and makes it bold. Well, when this happened, Domingo simply applied it to the translation like this. Other formatting showed up as these things called tags. Domingo placed these tags around the appropriate text in his translation, and it looked like this in lingo. Later, Simon asked Domingo if he could also translate the same project into French, too. Of course I will translate your project, said Domingo. So he added a second language to the project using Lingo's multilingual project feature. Now Domingo could switch back and forth between Arabic and French in the project, like this. But what about translating the files? Domingo took French classes in college, but he's a little rusty. So with Lingo's machine translation feature, translating the entire project was just a few clicks away, like this. For machine translations that he thought were good enough, he could just accept them as they were. For others, he could make adjustments before accepting them. Cool. Since Domingo was a little shaky on his French translations, he used Lingo's built-in review tool to send his translations to his friend Pierre. Pierre was excited to help with the project. Oui, oui, this project is magnifique. Pierre downloaded Madcap Contributor online and used the free Lingo review mode to check the translations, make changes, and send them back to Domingo. Domingo imported the changes from Pierre, and it looked like this in Lingo. It was all super-duper easy, unlike the translation tool of his forefathers. This is super-duper easy, unlike the translation tool of my forefathers, said Domingo after using Lingo. And when Domingo was all finished with the translations, he exported the Lingo project back out to Flair. And he said to Simon, Hello, my name is Domingo Fontana. I translated the Flair project, prepared to generate output from it. And that's exactly what Simon did. It couldn't have been easier. And it couldn't have been cooler. Even if you had a penguin riding on top of a unicorn, riding on top of a shark. Because you got to admit, that would be pretty cool. <laughs>